Game number one, Jin Air versus Samsung Galaxy. And Scion, unavailable today. Everyone else, though, up for grabs. And the Lee Sin band coming out against Eve. First off, there's that Zareth band against Gank by Mom. It is getting a little bit too scary. GBM definitely the best Zareth we have in Korea right now. But still, a huge champion pool on this guy that we've seen oh, yeah. so far. We know how good his Lissandra is, his LeBlanc, his Ezreal. He's uh, his Cassidy and all of these champions that he has, and his Ari also, champions that he has been doing just fine on. There is the Ari ban as well coming yep. in for GBM. So a bit surprising considering Ace allegedly likes to play many of these AP champions. And we do see a Lulu ban, so they won't be first picking that. Wow, three bans against GBM, who is most likely to take that Lissandra, I would say, on the Gen Air team. And also Lulu removed as well. Vagar has been prioritized as a first pick, and it will be again here today. We saw that yep. in SKT. Enjoy it while it lasts, guys. We're still on 5.3, so Vagar still has that instant event horizon, hasn't had any of the changes that came in 5.4 yet, so still a strong support pick. A first pick, even, in our first game. We'll see what Samsung decides to grab that Morgana. Still available for Jinair later on if they want it to. Now, here's the thing. We talked about this Corky pick. I wonder if we're going to see Captain Jack maybe bring up the Graves again. He was a great Graves player long, long ago on the ancient days of CJ Blades when it was the Captain Jack uh, Lulu Graves bot lane. I think he's more likely to take Callista. We've seen that matchup go heavily in favor of Callista in the past, especially with some hard CC and Vagar. It buys you a lot of time to get a bunch of Ren stacks up. There will be the Nidalee priority. Oh, okay. Wookie and Nidalee. Now, huh. Nidalee would be great for... Jin Air's poke style of play, so that may influence the priority here just a little bit. Eve has definitely had that champion. Now we could see the Graves come in. I do feel like Graves works very well with Vagar. You lock someone up and then you just blow them up with a buckshot. I mean, you have that huge burst potential to just delete people in 2v2s. Uh, I would assume that they're going to go for an Ezreal here then. We did see uh, in our last match, SKT versus Najin, that Ezreal Graves combination that SK Telecom used to try and delete the back line with ultimates. Yeah. And this is going to be a very squishy composition with this Nidalee as well, so it could be quite powerful. But instead, Jarvan and Rumble will be the pickups. Nar still on the board. Yeah, no reason to grab that Graves uh, or grab that Graves rather just yet, I suppose. Cassidy's still open. Again. I do think we're going to see Ezreal Graves here. Be, especially sense. with the equalizer. Oh, I yeah. mean, this is a crazy backline assassination composition right here, and they've got a great amount of CC as well for Jarvan and Vagar to utilize and to protect their own backline in turn. I know you'd love to see Gangplank, but I don't think we're going to see that, fortunately. I kind of like to see it too, man. It's fun seeing people lose half their health in parlay. I enjoy it. What kind of parlay is that, man? That's not a. That's no sort of uh, negotiation or discussion. That's just shooting, shooting the dude in the face. That is the discussion. It's over immediately, though. Whoa, and speaking of Alistar. Okay. Oh, immediately. Well, none of those really segue well, but Alistar was picked up. Interesting. Huh. Well, that is something I was not expecting, but it is something that counters that Graves to a certain extent, doesn't it? Well, not early on. I mean, yes, you've got some more sustain there to deal with Graves Ezreal, but I think the Rumble pick really gave Graves Ezreal away. This is a very strong composition from Jin Air, and yeah. we'll have to enjoy it while it lasts before the Vagar mega nerf comes in. Before the death of Vagar. Oh, well. Vagar and Cassidy destroyed at 5.4. Yep. Bye Pretty guys. much. Bye, guys. It's nice knowing you. Riot hates purple champions right now. <laughs> Look out. <laughs> Are you accusing Riot of purple racism, though? <laughs> Apparently, I hey, I I'm just I just call them like I see them, Andy. I just call them a purple people eater. <laughs> <laughs> well, is you know is Cassidy? Well, I guess Cassidy kind of used to be people, but Vagar is he really people? He's he's kind of like a weird. He's a yordle. Changed yordle, yeah. I don't know. We'll take it though. Purple people eater. You know, Alstar is looking a bit purple lately. Uh oh, watch out. <laughs> And Maokai, I think, is a solid pickup for uh, Kube. You know, as far as the tanky top laners that he's looked better on, Maokai has been okay, but I don't know. What, what do you think? What what would he take in, al in an alternative choice? That'd be good. Aurelia against some of this CC might be decent. 
uh, especially if he can flank and get into the back line. I think they're trying to, they want to absorb some of this AoE damage with Maokai's ultimate, if at all possible. So that does make a certain degree of sense. Also, the Alistar pickup, like you are saying, for a little bit of counter aggression in lane, but also the ability to break some of this CC from Vagar, if necessary, and the tankiness to avoid the burst also. So if he can get in the front line and up, just take some of the initial damage from Ezreal and Graves, that might help yeah. them survive. So not necessarily a terrible pick right here, Maokai. Setting up a couple really big tanks in the front line, but Corky and Nidalee are really going to have to watch out here. Well, it's going to be interesting. And the front line, you know, it's not going to save them from that damage when the collateral damage and true shot barrage rattle over the top of everything. Yeah. You still have to be very concerned about that positioning. And it's interesting to note, too, that we have seen the Rumble Ezreal combination. Uh, or actually Rumble and Zareth combination used extremely well by Jyn Air before. If you recall their game, their second game against CJ, uh, they used Rumble Ezreal to basically kill Coco like eight or ten times on Jace yeah. just by hitting him with the Equalizer in the back line and then GBM would open up with a Zareth ultimate and just take him down. We can easily see the same thing again here today. Uh, very true. I'm loving this Vagar support. Sad. It's, it's, it's very sad that this is going to go away soon because it's it was one of my favorite little support changes in the recent meta. It's just amazing how fast it took hold, really. Yeah, no we kidding. saw Tucson kind of bomb out with it, but as soon as it got into the hands of Gorilla, just like Janna, as soon as Gorilla <laughs> managed to start playing, That's it true. started being showing up everywhere instantly. Well, here we go. Let's get the game. There's a word here in some of this rift. Jyn Air versus Samsung, game number one. And GBM rocking the Ezreal this time around. His favorite Final Fantasy X tribute character. <laughs> Thankfully, not anywhere near as whiny as that Final Fantasy X character, though. I don't know about that. Well, no, Ezreal's way cooler than Titus. Or Titus? How do you pronounce it? Titus. Titus? I've heard it both ways. Doesn't really matter to me, it's still whining. Jack shot. <laughs> well, like I think two interesting early on here. And it really is surprising that that Janna pickup by Gorilla w went from not being used to number one first pick priority. Yeah. And the same thing has now happened with Vagar. Oh. Well, Gorilla, he's a trendsetter. Even if he doesn't intend to be. I'm sure he'd be happier if nobody else touched the Vagar and he could just keep abusing it. Yeah, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Oh well. I'm sure they're... Nah, never mind. I was going to say I'm sure they're going to change it, but I don't, I'm not sure. <laughs> Actually, not sure. Kasten's like, I'm untouchable. I'll be the best champion forever in League of Legends. <laughs> ah. Joke's on him. <laughs> don't tell him. <laughs> My <laughs> ultimate is the most powerful ultimate in the game. <laughs> I'm untouchable. <laughs> you, they can rework him, they can try and keep him down, but the only thing that can keep him down is by nerfing his ult range. Aww. They've done so many things. Yeah, they've tried. They've tried. He's just too good. It's not Cassidy's fault. It's just too good. When you touch the void, you know, I mean, that's what happens. Gain those powers. Chaser gaining the gift of Toadstool. All right, so. Gift of Toadstool. Hand of Toadstool. Gift of the it's a gift of the Tulsa hand. Yeah. All right, so Gromp killed here in our little bottom lane matchup. Jack yeah. only taking one of the Krugs, so we will see level two hit first here by Fury and Wraith. Should yeah. be after the next creep. Wraith may have gotten the entire Gromp right there. A little bit hard to tell. Hmm. Well, we'll see when the levels come in. Yeah. So we aren't looking at anyone at the moment. And Wraith zoning. He does hit that level two at the same time as Fury, so it looks like they did split the XP on that. Yep. So about equal right there, but yep. Jack and Che able to clear out the mini wave a little bit first as they got there sooner, and that's some damage coming in. This is now you have to be so careful too with Vagar, because he is really fragile. So a lot of times, you know, if you don't get 
those perfect event horizons, you can end up with an inferior trade, just like what we saw there. And here we go, Eve backing out. He starts to get low and will take out the blue buff quite easily before hopping his way down into the bottom side. Looks like he's coming around, perhaps for a gank on GBM. GBM running the heal this game, not really much worth cleansing here. Yeah, that is Besides how Maokai engaged, and he's unlikely to be engaged on anyway, given the amount of AoE CC coming out of Vagar and Jarvan. Yeah, it's pretty doubtful that Maokai will be able to get all the way to the back lines in the team fights later on. Jay waiting for it. There's the event rising on to Fury. A little bit more poke. Ah, but Wraith pushes Captain Jack out of lane. So Fury doesn't take that much, actually. You do need very good coordination if you're going to run this Vagar support to have both people in the bot lane on the same page as far as saving those abilities for that burst, too. Yeah, it's a really long cooldown on that event horizon. So yeah, it is. Be, it's kind of a very interesting matchup where you're off for a long time and then can really trade hard. That's the thing, is that it's it's strong, but it's, it's very high risk, high, work, high reward, you know? If you miss it, you lose a lot of presence in lane for a long time. Well, interesting that there's no Nar coming in in this game, so Trace has a little bit of an easier time farming. Well, we've really seen this top Nar side. fall off this week, haven't we? Well, after his nerfs, yeah. yeah. It's even harder to manage that Nar bar than it was previously, and it was already very difficult yeah. to coordinate team fights around it, so teams maybe shying away from that just a little bit. We'll see if it makes a return. I could see it coming back. But it'll definitely be working. Maokai's reliability, though, is just very attractive in general. Oh, yeah not so limited by when and how you can engage. Literally moving up into the top oh. side at the moment, looking for a gank onto that very vulnerable rumble. Not a surprise, oh. I mean, Trace should be trying to play close to his turret right here. Ping's going down, they know there's a ward in the river. Samsung aware of that. Jarvan now coming through the lane, and Chaser's just in the right place at the right time. He looks at the lane matchup, says, well, here's the one they're most likely to gank, especially as Trace is going to be pushing out right now into the tower, so he sets up for a counter gank immediately. He's just, that's exactly the right choice to make. Yeah, the ward is gone in river too, so this means that Samsung won't really see him as he moves down towards mid lane either. Uh, I think it was the crap, but. Oh, was it? Ah, okay. Right. Either way, it's gone. And Eve's gonna get jumped on by Chaser, turning around to do a bit of damage himself, but Eve has to back out. GBM trying to add some on with the Mystic Shot, ends up aggroing the Raptors instead. And Ace is pretty low. There was a point where he was extremely low, and I think if GBM had a mid laner with Ignite, Ace would have had to go back a bit sooner. But the heal makes it so it's not quite as dangerous, and Ace can stick around for a bit longer. Well, he did opt into the Kassadin versus Ezreal matchup. I mean, yeah. by the time that Samsung selected, selected Kassadin, they already knew that Rumble was in the top side, so they could have just sent Kassadin up in the top lane. Kubi has played that before, and then tried to get something a little bit better at dealing with this Ezreal in the mid lane, so they picked a pretty difficult matchup for Ace's first professional match. He's keeping up in terms of CS for now, but taking quite a bit of harassment damage. Chaser still there in the mid lane. Yep. Poking around. He may be trying to interrupt the blue transfer in a little bit, but he just wants to see where Eve is. Doesn't think, have a lot of wards there yet. I think he and GBM have a very good chance of this. They might just go ahead and dive as well through the minions here. There's the knock up, and it looks like first blood will go to Chaser. Way too easy. I think Ace should have gone back. Yeah, he uh, he yep. had the manage uh, the mana to get a rip walk down right there, but uh, the CC was just too much. He was way too low. So Chaser yeah. finds that angle and will pick up the kill. No summoners used on the Jyn Air side of things as well, too, so that was about as clean as it gets. Eve, ooh, taking a lot of damage there. And Event Rising comes through again. Fury getting bursted a bit, but Captain Jack is going to push against the wall. Knocked up. Captain Jack has to pop that heal to get out of this one. And there it is, Vagar. You know, once that Event Horizon is down, especially against the lane with an Alistar in it, you're just not going to be doing a whole lot. Yeah, it's good positioning, though, by Wraith as well, to constantly harass the Graves, find yeah. ways around the outside of the Event Horizon. You can tell from his positioning right there that they're trying to keep split up a little bit just so this Alistair can uh, have something to do while the Event Horizon is up. And Jack does lose the heal. There is a true shot barrage coming through the bottom side. 
Does, takes a bit. Oh, oh my. great event horizon. They jump onto Fury. He Valkyries away. Can Chaser get there? Knocked his wall. He's going to flash for it. Fury flashes as well. Can he get Oh, he misses with the Q. Misses. He hits him with the banner. Not enough damage, but Jay comes in and gets the kill at the last moment. It was a bit messy, but Gennaro come away with one there. Yeah, Chaser. <laughs> He didn't want to go into the turret right there, which no. is he dropped the, uh, the Q instead of the EQ to get the crowd control that maybe would have finished him off. Oh, he did the, an interesting decision. He did the right thing, but it looked like he missed with the Q. And no, he did the, miss uh, with the Q, yeah. And that he just wasn't enough damage. The banner right. wasn't enough damage. I, I think in that situation, it's just better in EQ and see what you can get, especially since he, I think he knew that the, he knew the headbutt was down. So there wasn't really a possibility of him getting chain CC'd or pushed further into the turret. I suppose. You might as well just go for the safer move. So even if you miss that Q, you may still land the knock up with your model. While Che making his way up into the top side. Now a lot of wards coming in. He's checking that one. And he's got his boots mobility now too. So he's going to be all over the map at this point. Looks like they're going to push up mid lane. Maybe they can get something going for a dragon here in the near future. Not a lot of vision really for either players. There we go. Wraith trying to get some wards down now, but I think Janaire's just going to be able to come in and well, ward they, it right up themselves. They really want this move up right now. and. They're trying to torture this new player ace as much as possible. We saw a very similar game plan coming in. Well, Chase for a bit trapped. He's going to cataclysm onto Fury, though. Fury has to back off over the wall. Ace comes in, gets a slow into GBM. GBM gets away without any, using, any summoners used, though. Trace walking down. Yeah. Not going to find much right here. Looks like Jenner not going to want to fully commit to this, but it's a very similar game plan to what we saw SKT do up against Najin with their new jungler and mid laner, just try and make it as difficult as possible. Oh, Hold yeah. out for those dives, make sure that Ace has trouble getting a blue buff. Well, so you do, you definitely want to pick on the new guy when he's in the booth for the first time. And you know, some of these players that we see being new on some of the rosters are coming in from amateur teams or they're coming in from other teams they've played for. Ace is just, for all we know, straight out of solo queue. Right. Indeed. And there's the blue buff transfer, so Ace will get it in the end. Yep. Bit of a relief for him. Plus or Willy. Oh, oh, Eve forced to take that one. Yeah, they did see the true shot barrage coming over with the minion, yeah. so it prompted the oh, take meanwhile. from Eve, and somehow. That was a teleport use. Kube coming down for a gank in the bot lane. They took out Che. But TP advantage going over to Jin Air now, so we'll see what this ends up leading to. And Here they're going to try to go for a drag. A little bit dangerous, I think, with the equalizer at this point. Eve's still pretty darn low right here. Captain Jack around as well, too. He's not coming up quite yet. Looks like they're just going to give this one away. All right. There's no, I mean, the thing is, is it's not the end of the world if Samsung gets the first drag in here. I think Jin Air could have contested it, but... They, one, one thing we have definitely noticed about this Jin Air team is that when they have the choice between a risk and playing safe, they will always choose yeah, to play safe. They're a very patient team. They will yeah. wait for you to make the mistake. Let's take a look at what happened to this bottom side, and that is Che not getting the stun off quite, because Wraith got stunned at the end of the headbutt right there and able to pile on through and get the kill with the help of the teleport, Kuve. Managing to grab it in the end. Yeah. So Trace, will he use his TP? There's not a lot well, to TP for right now. Tons of wards on the bottom side from Samsung at the moment. But they really do need to make a play with this somewhere on the map. You can see Wraith and Eve now up on the top side just trying to make sure that this Rumble doesn't have a lot of options and continues to get pushed in and feel that pressure so they can't open up the map in other places. And there's no counterplay right now with Dragon down. Cap Jack and Shake push up that bot lane. It looks like Trace gonna put a little bit of pressure on the Kube as well. Trace almost looking like he's going for a Abyssal Scepter first here. Yeah, he started out with a Blasting Wand, so I assume that's what he was doing. Against double AP composition also helps him against the Corky Poke as well. Does make a lot True. of sense actually as a first item. Yeah, getting that Negatron Cloak early against this composition is pretty nice. It'll serve him well yeah. until he can get the Zonia's Hourglass, but he'll have all the resists he needs at least for the mid game here before Corky's attack damage really gets rolling when he's still primarily relying on magic damage 
from his rockets. And oh boy. Eve is here. Eve is right there, but so Chaser. is Chaser. They're going to go in on the Trace here. Trace throws out the equalizer right on the Cataclysm. They force some flashes from Samsung. Two of them used. No summoners used on the side of Jin Era, so a win for that counter gate coming from Chaser. Yeah, this jungle, just because of the team compositions that each team has, the junglers are so focused on the top lane in this game, it's really shown any time Rumble pushes out, both Eve and Chaser are up on that side of the map, and they have to be, because that's where the fights are going to take place. Uh, if you try and gank the bottom side, well, uh, the denial with the crowd control from Vagar and Alistair is pretty rough. GBM and Ace are both highly maneuverable mid laners with a lot of escapability. Yeah. So where are you going to go? You're going to go for the top side where Rumble is by far the most vulnerable champion on this map right now. And so Chaser playing the counter game around it. Nobody coming up with anything too big, but it's a pretty transparent game in terms of where the junglers are going to be and when they're going to be there. Makes sense. Captain Jack's still in that bot lane. Looked like Wraith was waiting for an opportunity, maybe hoping Captain Jack would face check that river brush, but doesn't look like it's gonna happen this time around. Ace seems to have stabilized a bit here. GBM tries to go for the two-shot barrage. Looks like he just wants to push up this lane to go back. We'll see what he can pick up here. Thanks, yeah, take the blue buff first. Yeah. It's been a pretty quiet game so far, though. Yeah, aside from some early action, it's been, uh, it's been calm. Unfortunately, sadly, in my opinion. Well, I think this is just good for Jin Air, though. They are going to be able to fight come the next Dragon pretty effectively with their team composition. They do have a lot of burst damage, and before people get resists, it's going to be pretty hard to stay alive, especially since Kassadin really needs more time to start ramping up as he goes back, probably to finish off his Rod of Ages right now. Well, Keep Jin going. Uh, Yeah, well, he, okay. he usually goes tier. Uh, yeah. I was trying to see what the enchantment is. Our monitors are very small, but it does look like should be the mage enchantment. Yep, one would hope. Um, the blue one. But is it blue and black or white and gold? That's I can't <laughs> tell with that enchantment. I don't know. Oh, green is the color of the grass. I don't know why I said that when I was going to talk about a pink board. <laughs> I I'm just all confused on colors. Thanks, thanks a lot, internet. <laughs> Rotation in the mid lane, looks like they're gonna put some damage on the damage onto that mid turret. Dragon will be back up in about a minute 30. And the thing with Jin Air is they can just kind of hang out. They're only gonna be getting stronger as the game goes on. And like we've seen before, like you said, they're fine with being patient. And I think that's gonna serve them quite well. Yeah, no problem here. Just get that ramp from the Ezreal up. Uh, get that tier moving along so you can get that Muramana when you really start to do a hefty amount of damage to anything that True Shot Barrage passes through. Yeah. Here we go, blue buff again. This time will be handed over to Ace and GBM needs to get a recall, get a amount of Mune before this little dragon fight occurs. Samsung attempting to clear some wards in advance and they will find a pink right behind the red there. Yep, there's that mana mune from GBM. So, it begins the setup for the second dragon. And Jin Air in a bit better of a position to make something happen on this one. Ah, teleport with the home guards already for Kuve. Huh. So, very early home guards, not something we typically see so on a Maokai. Doing his best Marin impression, I guess. <laughs> That's right, and we'll take a bit of poke right there. Yep. Courtesy of Chaser and Che. You know what's annoying about Jin Air? What? Is that they have Trace and Che, and then the combination of Che and Trace, which is Chaser. Yeah, I know. <laughs> try try doing team fights with that one, yeah. Yep, it's not, not easy <laughs> or fun. Dragon started by Samsung. They're gonna try to get this one. I don't know how much uh, Jhenner is gonna try to push this. We'll see. Chaser coming in. There's a teleport for Trace. They're gonna go in under the dragon. Now Ace moving down to the outside of End Horizon. Blocks a few people down. GPM getting back. Jay trying to find an option to do damage, but just not coming. Jack untouched yet, and Samsung's getting very low. Oh, nice spear though, and GBM manages to take down Wraith. Looks like Jhenner should be able to take this dragon now. That was a very effective poke from the Jin Air Green Wings. As usual, these are the kind of compositions that they love to play. They are so yep. incredibly patient 
And I think it's a bit bold of Samsung to play a poke-oriented composition with Corky and Italy into them, because Jin Air, when they play poke versus poke, I mean, we've seen them be so patient that they can uh, come from behind against a team like CJ, who is running a double AD poke composition, and take it to 80 minutes and come out on top in the end. Yeah. Now, will they be able to get a mid lane turret here? It's going to be nearly dead if they don't kill it completely. Yeah, it looks like they will. Yeah. Yeah. Just using the Q to proc his Sheen right there. Yep. Make sure that he gets the extra damage down. And I'm excited to see that team fight again. So we can get it up on our screens here. Yeah. Infinity Edge and Brutalizer now done for Captain Jack. So definitely going with the armor penetration build here to vaporize as many people as he can with his skills as opposed to prioritizing some more attack speed and crits. Makes sense. At least for the moment. So definitely looking for that big upfront damage from his abilities. And that's the fight Jyn could have won. They hit, or should have won. They hit their power spike really nicely. Samsung, although they, they fought for it without really committing too much. Sure, they yeah. lost Wraith, but they didn't, they didn't bet the farm on that dragon fight, which they shouldn't. You might as well try and poke out. Maybe you get the better poke down. Maybe you're able to take it. If you lose one person and the dragon, it's not the end of the road. You do have really great scaling here uh, with Nidalee, Kassadin, and Maokai. Well, it was only Jyn Air equalizing dragons, too. It wasn't like uh, Samsung had to worry yeah. about Jyn Air getting two or something like that. So. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a wise move, and I and I think that's a move that we wouldn't have seen Samsung do in the first few weeks of the tournament too. Yeah, they're playing more patiently right yeah. now. The, the issue with Samsung though is if they don't get an advantage through early skirmishing and they don't come into this mid game with a gold lead, even if they do come into the mid game with a gold lead, they lose almost all the time. Um, but that's the only way we've really seen them be competitive because every other team has just been able to wait for them to make a titanic mistake <laughs> and then just crush them and well, roll the victory that's after the thing. that. That's the thing with these new teams, you know, that are still kind of coming together as a roster and don't have a lot of experience at the pro level yet. If you play safe and wait long enough, they will make a mistake. Yeah, they'll make more mistakes than you at the very least. So oh, yeah. You can feel confident going in. GBM. Whoa, okay. and that oh, was nearly flash. a solo kill. Yeah, he did get the flash. Meanwhile, the rest of his team gets a top lane, so that's a 3-0 to zero turret lead now for the Jyn Air Greenwings. Yeah, forcing Ace out of lane two while he freezes right next to his turret. Very difficult situation based on minion waves for Samsung to be in right now. Jyn Air starting to move that ward line forward into the top side jungle. They want to punish this Maokai. And Samsung, when they played these scaling comps in the past, they haven't done well. Yeah. They pretty much just get rocked in power spikes from, that are happened earlier for the enemy team and falls so far behind in the mid game that they're never quite able to catch up. We'll see if Samsung will suffer the same fate here. It's starting to kind of look that way. I mean, we've still got a lot of game to go yet, but it's uh, certainly leaning towards the Jyn Air side. Yeah, just keeping that mid lane pushed up. And Eve, you know, I mean, we've seen him be a very effective ganker and uh, on other champions in the past, like Lee Sin, Jarvan, this Nidalee, of course, more poke oriented, but he just hasn't been able to quite get in there and do damage when he needs to yet this game. And that's a lot of uh, lane pressure that I think normally exists from Samsung that doesn't exist with this Nidalee pick. Yeah, it's true. I mean, Nidalee does have some good kill potential if you can hit her spears, but you have to remember, too, that really, he, again, it comes down to where your jungle options are to gank. And really, top lane was the only truly gankable lane in this game for either team. So I think that in terms of his farming, and the great thing what I love about Eve's Nidalee build is that Pounce actually stacks tier. So you can stack tier so fast. You can see he already has that Seraphs in race of 20 minutes. Yeah. You can stack it much faster than a laner can because you don't. You can just pounce constantly between camps and you don't have to worry about CSing a lot of the time. So you just pounce, 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 pounce. And so you actually end up, you don't have the normal mana problems you would normally have with a Nidalee in the jungle without blue buff as well. So it makes it easier to give up your second blue onwards. And not only that, it gives you this very powerful item that really wasn't, it's not, you're not supposed to have this at this point in the game. You are not supposed to have a Seraph's Embrace right now, which gives you additional tankiness um, and some good damage if you want to go all in or 1v1 somebody. So yeah. I actually think that this is a fantastic build for Jungle Nidalee. 
uh, just based on the speed at which you can stack a tier and then go into other magic damage on the side. You'll notice too, look at the difference in CS between Chaser and Eve. Yeah, sure, Chaser's been ganking more, but you can jungle so fast because you constantly have enough mana to heal, 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 heal yourself. Yeah. With this build, you basically can stay in the jungle forever without going back. It, I I was surprised to see this at first from Eve because it was so different to what other jing, jungle Nidalee players were doing. If we look at Svenskrin, who prefers uh, kind of like haunting guys and magic pen items coming in early. This was a really big departure and, and scaling, but Nidalee, this Nidalee build in the late game, and it does a lot, hurts a lot more. Well, like you said, you can get kind of that faster start to the big ticket items with that quick ceremony race. We'll see if it ends up benefiting him though. Sonya's done for Ace now, which should help a little bit. Dragon is alive again. So we're back to that phase. The vision advantage right now going slightly to Samsung just around the pit, but I don't know, I have to take that back. Jinner has a lot of wards too, now that some of the portraits have moved on the minimap. Yeah, we'll see. we'll see. We'll see what they can do. Looks like Che's going for a Banshee's Veil as well too, not wanting to get poked out by those Nidalee Spears. Can't blame him there. Or rockets for that matter, I suppose. Yeah, especially since he's going to have to stand closer to the front yeah. line just to make sure he can get that it's a good a event horizon down. You know, they don't really have a, a strong front line with this composition while Chase are still trying to get tank here, so Che will be exposed a little bit more. It's a bit of an odd item to see that quick on of support, but given the situation, I think it makes a lot of sense. We'll see if he goes straight into Veil, if he's just going to stay on Cal for a while. That's going to be the big question right yeah. here. Dragon is live. And uh, Samsung should trade this for a tier two if they can. Well, Maokai's working on that tier two right now. Kube might be able to get it. Jinair really looks like they want to commit to a fight here. There's a flash of Ventura Horizon. Can the team follow up? Oh, wow, True Shot Bros comes through. Eve getting poked out immediately. Nice equalizer. Fury coming from the side, but they can just turn right onto him now. Yeah, Trace comes in and does a ton of damage to Corky. Meanwhile, Chaser chasing Wraith through the jungle. A kill for GBM. Make that one a double. And so, two kills, and are they gonna get three? Kube came in way late with the teleport, not able to get anything done with that. A triple kill for GBM. Finally, Captain Jack goes down, but this is going to certainly be a big win for Jin Air Green Wings. They're gonna just be able to turn right over and take that dragon whenever they want to at this point. What a great engage right there from Che with the yeah. flash event horizon, followed by the true shot barrage to really help damage Eve and the equalizer just this is the danger of Jin Air's composition. They can deal so much damage from an extended range. Have to be very, very careful. I do wonder if we're gonna see Che get some distortion boots just so we can do that more often. The I, distortion enchantment would be very strong right now. I think that'd be really smart, yeah. I, the more you can do event rising, the better. Things go for support Vagar, that's for sure. Let's take a look at this again. So Trace gets poked out a little bit right here. So does Ace and Eve. Wow, look at Che. Look at wow, just hitting up immediately, landing a combo. On to Eve. Of course, Eve's the one with the AP, so that Vagar going to do some work. Che Chaser flashes in, bottles up Wraith so he can't CC. Meanwhile, everybody just flashing through the side, and they do manage to take out Fury in the end. Captain Jack did get a little bit separated right there. Probably should have stuck a little closer to home. I'm impressed by Che, too. That is not an easy play to hit. Catching three people like that with Event Horizon requires some pretty exact skills. Yeah, especially right on the edge right there. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot, you know, you could compare it to like a, a flash Tibbers from Annie. It's, it's much easier, I would say, to hit something like that because you have a big area that it affects. You know, imagine like if you only could hit t people with the very out edge, outside edge of Tibbers, that's what you have to do with Event Horizon. Yeah, the, the it wasn't really that Samsung made a big error right there either. It was just playmaking from Jin Air because yeah. If we look at what happened as Kube and Captain Jack just kind of crawl in the top sign. Yeah. If we look at what happened right there, Samsung, by all rights, should have been far enough away. You don't expect to have that much damage coming in from that long range, nor for that Vagar to commit to a flash event horizon and nail it right. perfectly like that. So Oh, here comes the Baron now for the Jin Air Green Wings, and they're gonna get it, it looks like. Yep, easy, they're gonna turn right on to Kube. He pops that ultimate, he goes in, Samsung comes back. Can they get enough done? The top laners both go down. Captain Jack knocked up as well. He's gonna back away with GBM, back into the pit there. A kill comes in 
for Ace, and so it looks like they will trade two people for that Baron. Ace comes in. Can he get any more off of this? Shane drops that event horizon to slow people up, and Captain Jack still under threat. And here comes Wraith from the other side, and Jin Air is going to pay big time for this Baron and Ace. And Samsung with an opportunity now to really take back some of this lead. So dangerous to do that, Baron. No kidding. Considering they don't really have a tank. They did manage to get it, but you have a poke composition if you're Jin Air. You don't want to be fighting Baron right here in the mid game. You just want to take down their turrets and try and set yourself up with uh, ward flanks for more static objectives. Fighting in the river is exactly what Samsung wants. I think this is a good example of Jin Air getting a little bit sloppy here. Yeah, Samsung in Kube goes in and that poke blows up Trace, but Eve does a good job of kiting right here. Raid with his ultimate, not something easy to deal with. Chaser engages, but Ace with the instant Zonias makes it not worth very much at all. Chase tries for an event horizon, does stun Eve, but Wraith already intelligently wrapping around the side to clean it up. Very good flank. Not bad at all. That's, that's a lot of items now for the Samsung side. Another needlessly large draw for both Eve and Ace there. Oh, GBM, they catch Wraith and River, and that's an easy kill. Wraith just kind of walking up and getting caught by Che. No ultimate either to break that one, so, yep. Well, Very true. that did put Samsung right back into this one in terms of our gold score, but still going to be reeling a little bit in terms of uh, their control over this game because they didn't get a whole lot for that ace. We'll see how it affects the next dragon as it comes up. Yeah. Ace starting to get pretty scary though. Getting very dangerous and inching closer to that death cap. Yeah, it's gonna have a lot of with you when that one's done. That Jack needs to be a bit careful here at the bot lane. He does have some teammates to back him up though. So should be fine. And a pretty fast QSS for Fury as well, just to make sure that he can get out of that event horizon if he gets caught in it, or anything else, equalizer. You name it. Well, it's also just going to give him a little bit more protection against the damage coming in from the equalizer as well. So yeah. Really a smart idea. Well, well Captain Jack, or rather uh, GBM doing a lot of damage too now with that last whisper and the Muramana. Also the Banshee's nail on top of everything as well, too. Well, he's worried about us being assassinated in the back line by this Kassadin, which is yeah. exactly what happened during that Baron fight. So might as well get a little bit of protection. Chaser didn't have the best cataclysm in that little engagement around the Baron. He did not end up kind of trapping GBM in the pit yeah. alongside Kassadin. And also using it on a Kassadin that can zone you is just really not a good use of that ability. I think if Chaser had gone the other direction in that fight, and Cataclysm on the other side of Baron Pit instead of in it, he actually could have saved probably three of his team, teammates' lives right there. So that's a bit of an error from Chaser. Come to think of it upon reflection in that last engagement. Of course, new trinkets are here, so we see them coming out of Ace and Eve. Eve, interestingly, deciding not to go for a lens this game. Although in Italy it does make sense because you just need the vision in order to poke over walls, so having a couple extra wards can be quite useful to you. And you're going to be staying pretty far back in the first place. Double lens, Oracle's lens from Jin Air, however. Yeah, it makes sense. And will they be able to grab this blue buff here? Looks like they will. Yep, just letting that one reset a bit. Wraith is there. In fact, the whole team. I think Jin Air might need to back off this one. Okay, who got it? Looks like uh, Jack Captain did. Jack actually got it, yeah. And they're going to turn right on the Dragon. Okay, Samsung, can they take it? Kube going for this inhibitor turret. Samsung can make the save eye. There's the teleport, though. Kube coming in, event horizon already used. And there's a great knock of What a play from Wraith. Jameer trying to turn this one around, but Samsung already in the back lines. Ace coming over the wall, has Sazonius. He's a bit on his own here, gets back into the Dragon pit. Very, very low. GBM can't quite pick him off with a Mystic shot, so amazingly, no one has died just yet. They couldn't quite get enough damage onto Kube right though. They yeah. didn't stun him, but 
Stunning Wraith right there and not stunning Kuve on the teleport just meant that their front line was able to move in immediately. Here comes Trace back again yeah, with home guard. With that teleport, he's got more life. He's got a lot of damage. Flash, twist advance. They take out GBM. Jay gets pushed back by Wraith. Wraith trying to be that big tanky front line. Chaser not able to do too much. Captain Jack on the run now, and Samsung is on the verge of winning another team fight here. A double kill already for Fury, and another one added on for Eve. And suddenly, Jin Air just can't seem to find a proper angle for these fights. Well, that was the concern here. You get into the late game with this Maokai, he becomes so difficult to kill, and GBM yes, making so. a positional error right there, standing out at the front line, didn't have his veil up, and so it was all too easy for Kuve to twist and advance to a pretty rare positional mistake, actually, from GBM in that fight. And well, Kuve did have to flash for it, but yeah, GBM a little bit too far forward there. Well, but he needs to know when Flashes up for Maokai when yep. that play is possible. So, True. a bit of an error. And uh, that will lead to Jin Air losing another fight right now. They've got to start being careful. The scaling is going to be pretty brutal here from Samsung. Let's watch this one again. Yeah, let's take a look at this. So, I don't really like that Event Horizon either because it only zoned out Eve, really. It was way too early. And yeah. Wraith was able to break the crowd control initially with his ultimate Unbreakable Will. Ace gets into the back line, and Ace living here was actually really <laughs> crucial. It was amazing, too. He had to have sub-50 health there for a moment. Yeah, that, this fight could have gone very differently. Jin Air may have yeah. been wanting to push their luck a little bit more. It was a close one. If Cassidy was no longer up. So GPM just trying to get some poke in, as you can see, but then watch Kuve as that ultimate flash was advanced. Yeah, GBM just walks way too far forward there. And he could have stayed back, continued poking, especially since he had that Rumble who had just healed up in the front line. However, Trace still no Zonia's Hourglass on this Rumble. And also, he only has the Haunting guys, so no upgrade yet to deal with some of these higher HP targets that are developing, like Kasdan, like Maokai. Yeah, no uh, Merlin Namakon as well either. Fury. Gets hit by the... Yeah, he uses that QSS to get out, though, so he'll be fine. And I think Che is kind of showing us here that it is it is tough to play this Vagar support. It's not just walk up and press E and then win games. You really need to be careful about when you use that Event Horizon as much as where you use it. Well, and when you play a comp like this, too, if you in the last fight, Chaser misused Cataclysm. In that fight, Che misused Event Horizon. Yeah. This is a very difficult comp to run properly because you don't have any inherent tankiness, and you don't even have a Zonia's Hourglass yet for Rumble. So you basically have to use those abilities perfectly or you will lose a team fight. Yep. Well, we've certainly seen what happens when you don't. Warding going out around Baron now. It is about that time. Janair's Baron attempt last time did not work out though. They end up getting aced. And Samsung now really able to start put, putting the pressure on. The annoying thing for Samsung is they, even though with Maokai here and Kassa, they may want to dive, they absolutely cannot dive due to Event Horizon. Yeah. So it's going to maybe of a longer game right here. Could very well be. Double pickaxe right now for Fury. That's kind of interesting. Just maybe wanting a little bit of a burst in damage, but I, think I don't know. A I mistake. think that's kind of a mis yeah, yeah. mistake. I, I think he's trying to move into Last Whisper, and he bought pickaxe twice just due to uh, going to the shop very quickly. Could be. Could be. Which is too bad, because if he hadn't done that, he would not be very far away from that Last Whisper right now. So that actually... Well, eventually it'll be Last Whisper and Infinity Edge if he wants it to be. So it's not yeah, the end of the world, but yes, it does put him in a rather inconvenient power trough right now, especially since he did go for that Bloodthirster earlier on. So his physical damage going to be lower than Captain Jack's in terms of sustained output over the course of a team fight. You see him go back right now and by the last whisper holding oh, okay. on to the second pickaxe. Had enough after all. All right. Wasn't so bad after all. You know, an ace, besides uh, having a little bit of a tough time getting camped early on, has really been performing well overall this game. Yeah, it's been been admirable. His team fighting, his decision making about when to go in on Gaston has been quite good. He held up well in lane in a tough matchup. Looks like it's all going okay. Ooh. 
There is the red buff not being stolen by GBM. Yep, that's Still a lot of poke coming in onto Eve. Oh, Whoa, flash event rise and he catches Eve. Eve manages to get away though. Teleport coming down. There's the equalizer right where Kube is going to come in. Jin Air trying to disengage now, but look at this again. Kube getting onto the back lines. They take out Captain Jack immediately. Ace comes in for some damage, then the Zonias, and Trace not in a position to do anything. And yet again, those CC abilities not quite used at the right time and the right place. And Samsung pretty easily at this point is taking these team fights. Well, right there, they had to kill Eve immediately. When Eve got away, everything started to go wrong. They committed yeah. pretty far forward for that one and couldn't quite make it in the end. Now, will they be able to actually contest this Baron right here as Samsung closes in on the objective? Well, Jin is rushing back towards this right now, and they have a chance to maybe do something about it. Trace does not have Equalizer, though, which is kind of a big story here. Baron will go down, almost Close. stolen by GBM, but not quite. Eve gets it in the end, and Samsung's gonna get away clean with this one. Yeah, Jinera really misusing that crowd control this game. Yeah. Not able to make the right decisions or at least to get the follow up necessary. Eve just too far away. Well, it looks like they're trying to, you know, they're trying to support Vanguard. It's what everybody's doing right now, but they just don't seem to have a handle on how to use it, you know, at the proper level. Well, it's also the fact that Trace just doesn't have a Zonia. If he could stand there and Zonia's with his flame spitter on the front line and actually deter Samsung from just walking into the back line, that would be a major difference right here. Well, that is true. We saw him win an Azubu Super Play Award for just that sort of play. Instead, going for the Abyssal Leandri's Void Staff build, so he's yeah. got good damage, but it doesn't really matter if the rest of his team dies too quickly. Yep. Uh, the way Jin Air needs to play these team fights is to wait for Samsung's engage, just poke, 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 and not try and get overly aggressive with Cataclysm or Event Horizon. Save those for a counter engage to buy your team a bigger chance to poke. Oh yeah, at this point it's gonna be very difficult for Jin Air to be the instigator of these team fights. Have to kind of play it responsibly. Samsung though putting the pretty heavy siege onto this bottom inhibitor turret right now. Captain Jack is trying to poke that annoying cannon minion. It looks like they'll finally get it. And Event Rising does hit Fury and Eve, but not right. enough follow-up damage, though. They got some good poke down, but with the Nidalee heal, of course, this late stage of the game, when she's got some AP, that really is going to provide an absolute huge amount of sustain for your team. Yeah, well, I mean, between... And he's already back up in the Bloodthirster as well. Between Maokai and Italy, Samsung's looking pretty tanky, but look at that, a lot of damage on the Ace. He manages to get out. There's Equalizer coming down, and they weren't able to get any kills there, but they are pushing Samsung away. They just need to distribute some of the damage right here as best yeah. as they can, and try and force them off the turret, but that's not gonna be enough. No, Ben Horizon goes down yet again, but Wraith and Kube, they don't care, man. They're just coming in anyway. Knockup comes in from Chaser. There's a Cataclysm. They catch a couple of them. Fury caught as well. Gets very low. Has the Valkyrie away. And here comes Ace with that Zonius. Can they finish him off? They certainly can. Another nice event. Horizon actually coming in from Jay. And it looks like Jynair is going to turn this one around. A double kill for Trace. And that was oh, much better use. He dodged the spear with the Event Horizon, or with the uh, Arcane Shift right there. Right. And yes, absolutely, Doha. That is the way they should have been playing these team fights the entire game. Hold off. Get the poke down while you can, and then wait for the rest of your team to just poke them out and then use the CC on the counter. So here we go, patient game. They're spread out very nicely right now. Wraith and Kube can't CC more than one target at a time with the spread that good. There's the Cataclysm as they start to retreat after being kited out right there. Trace and Chaser in that front line. Che following up, keeping everybody pinned down with an Event Horizon. Much better use of their abilities. Oh yeah, well here we go. Jin Air now trying to take down this tier two turret in the mid lane. And they've got a good opportunity to do this. Kuve and Ace still not awake or alive rather just yet. Awake makes it sound so much nicer, doesn't it? <laughs> They're just sleeping guys, don't worry. Uh, they weren't able to get the turret, but it looks like they will get the jungle of Samsung on the way out again. And it'll give them, give them some chance to finally get some deep wards down as well, too. Yeah, just trying to switch warding over to their favor. They do have to clean out some pinks in their own jungle. Looks like Trace is going to find one of them right there. It'll make things a lot easier. And Captain Jack taking wolves for 
pulling back right there. Yep, they have to defend mid now. That's also the Bloodthirster going to be very useful for him. That oh, overshield yeah. and sustain. Looks like Trace finally going for his zone use here, unless he decides to go crazy full damage and go death cap. But I've got a feeling that Rod is going to turn into a uh, he, zone use yeah, at some point. Yeah, he really needs that. Yes, he does. I'm, I'm actually a little bit surprised he's not going for the... Well, never mind. I was going to say a surprise he's not going for the Seeker's Arm Guard first. But at this point, you might as well just grab more damage. Yeah, he, yeah the damage is going to be a little bit more important. And plus, you're not going to have a lot of time to stack it, yep. uh, generally speaking, at this stage of the game. So yeah. you want to turn it into the Zonya's Hourglass as fast as possible. Sure enough. And that ward seen by the pink of Jyn Air. Pretty good warding so far for Jyn Air in their own jungle. But the pressure continuing to come from Samsung. There's a vulnerable inhibitor, and look at this. Jyn Air hiding. Will they get spotted? Not quite yet. Uh, no, they did get seen by the minions, I suppose. It's going to be very hard for them to defend this inhibitor just because they have they need a long time to poke out right now. Yeah. And Samsung can just rush it if they so choose. Ace oh. is going to take a little bit of damage right there. Well, Ace doing a big amount of damage to Chaser there. Event Horizon didn't catch him in the end. And so that was really nice for Samsung to be able to do that little bit of damage onto the inhibitor. Oh. A good spear on the GVM. Spears really start to hurt with Eve's build in the late game. Yeah, it's starting to look that way. A flash available for everybody on the Samsung side, so it's going to be tough for Jyn to catch them. Well, that was close. Here we go! Coming in huge knockup combos from Kube and Wraith, pushing back Jyn right away. Che manages to get out with his flash, and now Jyn turning it around. All Samsung needs, though, is that inhibitor, and they got it. They're going to back out of the base, and I don't know, can Samsung make it out? Looks like they can, Jyn not quite able to catch them. Really nice little engage there for Wraith and Kuve to just keep Jyn Air wrapped up while they take down the inhibitor. Right as he doesn't have any mana as well, so very important transition. Yeah. They basically ran that about as hard as they could. Of course, Dragon will be up in 30, so there will be a contest here. And Eve landing the important spears because you saw Samsa go in as soon as that spear hit. They knew they could push forward and at least take the inhibitor out with the man advantage. Good shot calling. Samsung's team fighting looking significantly better than we've seen it previously. Yeah, I mean, they've had a little bit of a break, and even before that, we saw them starting to improve a bit. And again, you know, I feel like we've been saying this a lot lately, but they're looking better than ever. Yeah. And it looks like Ace having a very solid game on Cassidy too, so initially, it seems like a strong pickup, but one game isn't exactly the biggest sample size, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, Kassin also a very strong pick in general. Looks oh, like yeah. Jyn just wants to go for this dragon immediately. This is a bit risky for them. It is, and they handle it. They're backing off now. Chaser in the pit without a flash. Gets out with the QE combo. Chaparaj comes through. They tried to get that dragon, but Fury managed to do the damage and take it. So two dragons for Jyn right now, but that's four for Samsung at this point. All right, they have to get back and defend right now. Don't want to lose any more towers. There is a large minion wave pushing up in the top side, and Jyn'Air has time to meet that minion wave in the bottom lane. The question is, how much pressure is going to be going on to Baron here? Yeah. In the interim, two super minions. Rumble will be, of course, the one designated to clear these out. Yep. Which will not be too difficult for him, thanks to the Leandries. He's got a lot of damage right now. He's going to be really close to that. Uh, that's on his hourglass, actually. I don't think so, yeah. Oh. GBM just grabbing that red buff. Baron is up again as well. 5,000 gold lead for Samsung at the moment. And they are playing up this late game better than we've ever seen them play a late game before, by far. Yeah, it's true, but I think they've, they've done a nice job of capitalizing on some of those team fighting mistakes Jyn Air made. Jyn Air played a difficult comp. This is a hard composition to run, and to, I think, to a certain degree, they're paying for it. You cannot make those errors with your crowd control as they did. And the crab setup is complete. Rumble has cleared out that wave, though, so he will be able to recall and join the team with teleport if needed. Samsung playing this patiently, though, and now it looks like they're going in. Now Wraith 
taking some damage here. Samsung hanging out in the Baron pit. There's the event horizon coming down. Trace coming from the side, gets pushed away by El Sarkuva getting in the back line. A kill for GBM already, though. Tracer in his own ultimate has to get out of that one. Kube turning around. Fury barely lived through it. Another kill comes in for Captain Jack this time. Kube getting very low, and he's going to get taken out. Looks like Jin Air managed to win that fight. Can they take the Baron off of it? Fury at low health trying to sustain back up on some jungle camps. GBM just kind of waiting outside the pit, getting ready. Fury taking down the turret in the meantime. So it looks like Jin Air will have to buy this Baron with the turret, but they do get it. And they'll get back home now. So, Jinair with still a chance in this game. They're, in, they're one inhibitor down at this point. Fun fact, actually, if GBM had attacked the Baron right there, instead of starting to recall early, he would have gotten back faster. But anyway, we'll talk about oh, yeah. that in a second. Uh, so, Che coming up right there. They do get the flank. Trace with the teleport does manage to finally eliminate Eve. With the help of the event horizon, Jack is left on his own with Ace, does get enough damage down, thanks to his sustain from the Vamp Scepter, and Kube stuck with all that percent damage coming in from GBM and from Trace, does find himself burned down pretty quickly. Jin Air trying to crawl back into this one, they're closing that gold gap. What I said about that Baron was GBM started recalling early, but if he had just been DPSing, basically he got back to base, at the same time his teammates did, because it took four seconds. Well, yeah, so you get his, that empowered recall now, right, so. Right, but if he, so he probably would have gotten back a second or two earlier had he actually just been DPSing the entire time, so. Yeah. Something interesting to think about when you're recalling in a tense situation when there's an AD carry on your turrets is, is this actually going to be faster if I recall, or if, as a major carry, my damage could be more useful yeah. on the Baron? That empowered recall is pretty fast right now. All right, well, Jenner has bought themselves a new lease on life in this game. Their bottom inhibitor is back as Graves dives into the ground. That can't be helpful. Well, GBM has actually switched out his Veil for Mercurial Scimitar now. Yeah. Thanks to some of his adventures on the front line and getting twisted <laughs> advanced on by Kuve, I imagine. Yep. So he's got a lot of damage at this point. And look at Janair. They've actually swapped out a couple of their lenses for upgraded uh, upgraded uh, scrying orbs right now, which is always a great thing to have in the late game, especially with the changes where it drops a ward of its own. Well, yeah, that's kind of the sort of rotating trinkets that we're going to see now, is if everyone drops their sweeping lenses, then you might as well start picking up the scrying orb with the uh, free ward on it. Yeah. Since you know it's going to last. Good adaptation. They still have two Oracle's lenses, which is plenty to clear at this point in time, even though Samsung does have the double stealth token going on. Yeah. These triggers have become a lot more interesting recently. GBM taking a chunk. He'll be able to heal back up, though, with the help of his blade. Yep. All right, here we go. Janair pushing up the mid lane. Still going for that inhibitor. We'll see if they can do any sort of damage to it. I love what he has done man. here. Eve has bought Burke Tread's Distortion Enchantment. Those are two items you hardly ever see on a jungler, but this is an adaptation to what's happening in this game. He knows how much Che has been trying to flash onto him, yeah. and so now he'll have his flash up more frequently if possible, and more frequently than Che will at the very least if they both use it at the same time. And, of course, getting those Burke Treads to eliminate a bit of the crowd control, so good adaptation. Very nice Makes indeed. A lot of sense. 2,000 gold here unspent for Ace. Yep. And we're moving into that ultra late game that Jin Air loves so well. They do, and here we go, Event Horizon coming down. They blow a beef completely. Chaser in the middle of everything. Wraith in a bit of trouble. That was a great equalizer from Trace. Nice ult from Chaser. They force a flash out of Kuve and Jin Air pushing back Samsung now. Oh, Trace needs to be a bit careful taking some of that damage here. Oh, good ult from Che. Big chunk taken out of Cassidy. Didn't catch him with the Event Horizon, so Ace was able to rift walk out of it, but not before getting hit by that uh, Primordial Burst, I think it's called. Yeah, Primordial Burst is sold. That's right, and, and that yeah. gets Jin Air, Tier 2 turret. And the thing, too, about Eve in this game is by running an AP jungler who's quite fragile like this, basically another mid laner as we approach six items, oh, yeah. it gives Vagar another target to hit. That's a very good point. Eve not very resistant to the magic damage coming out. More yeah. turrets go down in favor of Jin Air as they Move back into the lead in terms of gold by just a hair. Some kills and two turrets out of all that. 
And now Samsung, you know, they've been playing well. They've capitalized on some errors from Jin Air, but like you said, we're getting into that super late game, and that is really where Jin Air wants to be. This is where they feel most comfortable, apparently, this season. And if there's anything that uh, I would say, if there's any team that feels the least comfortable in the super late game, it's going to be Samsung. Yeah, taking it here, I think, is yeah. an edge to Jin Air. And there is Eve with a blue pot right now. Yep. 876 AP in the jungler, you know, whatever. Yeah, I, you know, it happens. <laughs> This is why I love Eve's Italy build. I think it's it's very solid, scales really nicely, yeah. and makes you well, a you massive just, threat late. Yeah, you have so much more just killing power as a jungler than really any of the other picks right now in the meta. It's really something else. But it does make you very vulnerable to a support Vagar. That's, that's the thing. That's the kind of weird thing about this. But don't worry. Don't worry, Italy junglers. You won't have to worry about it for long. Che actually going for a second Megatron right now. Well, you really need to be careful here with Fegar. You don't want to get blown up, and it's it's so easy to get. I imagine it's going to be a missile actually. In yeah, the end. that makes sense. Oh, Fury taking some damage here. Cap Jack doing a bit to the turret himself before being poked away from it. GBM with double buffs somehow. And the siege coming in from Jin Air. Baron up in about a minute, so both of these teams need to be very careful not to lose a fight at this point, because if either side, lo either, if either side loses a fight, that's going to be a Baron, too. Oh, Ace going really deep, GBM low. There's a zone, he's getting popped, some knockups coming in for Wraith. Jin Air backing away, a nice methodical disengage from Jin Air, and they'll get away without losing anybody, but they won't get that turret. Well, they have the talisman now. They do. Uh, on Vagar, so that's really helping them out in terms of their kiting. They've got a lot of movement abilities. Of course, you see GBM popping his scimitar right there just to stay a little bit safe. Ace with a nice engage, though. That was a good try, and yep. they at least kept their turret alive, so a little bit of a win right there from Samsung. Baron up in 30, though. No inhibitors down, but this will be a nice early setup here by Jin Air to take control of the map that very few wards on it. Of course, in the late game, they'll be really having those slots. Ace, interestingly, going for a Lich Bane, an item we don't typically yeah. see on Kasten, but he just wants to all in somebody and burst them as hard as possible in auto range. And also, then GA, I mean, uh, Zonyas. Can also help him become the ex Peke if he needs to go and snipe a Nexus, I suppose. <laughs> Oh, red buff taken right there. Chaser using his smite, so he's not going to have that for another few seconds. The battle over Baron continues. Jinair needs to be very careful about how they play this one. Yes, they do. Well, I think they've, uh, I think they've learned a couple times this game already what happens when you're not. Side wave control in favor of Jinair, though, so they can wait this one out for a little while if they need to. Yeah. Seems like they'll have an easier time way pushing and top pushing towards Jin Air. This is so risky. Man, if I was Che right now, I would feel terrified. I'd be like, oh man. It's a tense situation. You can just get blown up so fast. Okay, well, somebody's going to have to go deal with the side waves on Samsung. They are not, they didn't set up their waves very well moving into this fight. And they don't have enough vision control right now to fake out the Baron or to try and force an engage. So, just a matter of waiting. Jin Air can be. Patient. They can feel comfortable right now. Waves developing very nicely in their favor, and they, this is it. Oh, Samsung has to wow. go for it. They are going for it, and Captain Jack and the rest of Jin Air coming in. Baron gate very low. There goes the Equalizer coming through. Baron, Chaser comes in. He gets it. Chaser grabbed that Baron. Now can Jin Air win the fight? They split up Samsung completely. It should be an easy victory. GBM with a 1v1. The dual win against Ace and G GBM and the rest of Jin Air. Looks like they might be ready to uh, get themselves. Oh, we're not done yet, I guess. Here we go. They managed it. Well, Fury got out of that somehow. The Wraith is going to get taken down. Eve's still in the back. Fury actually up in the top lane now. Minions. Captain Jack with a kill there. Minions weren't helping either, and there's the ace. And that is the end of the game. So, despite Samsung playing extremely well, when it's all said and done, Jin Air does exactly what they've been doing all season long, taking it to that super late game, and that's going to get them yet another win here. Champions Korea. Well, and you wonder why Sam, a lot of people would wonder why Samsung tried to take that Baron right there, but you really had to look at what was developing in the side lanes no, they had in to. order for that to make any sense. Because as soon as they had to send 
two people back to start saving inhibitor turrets or tier two turrets, that's when the, the Baron can be taken. Yeah. Or, you know, Jyn Air has so many possible rotations to make on the map right there to force you into a defensive position um, that it makes it very difficult to deal with that. And that's why wave management in the side lane is so important in the game these days, always has been, but it, it's much more advanced in terms of the meta game. Very true, and I mean, when it's when it's all said and done too, it's something that you would expect Samsung to 